We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Tes Amad Aleph Masech Shabbos. This is Shabbos Daf Seventy Nine A. The Gemara before was discussing a machlokas in the Brisa between the Tanakama and Rabbi Yehuda about carrying a star that has already been paid off. The Tanakama said, since you can't do anything with this star, it's worthless. Therefore, you're not carrying anything of any substance on Shabbos, and therefore, on a Doraisa level, you're putter for carrying. Rabbi Yehuda was machmir anyways, even though it's there's no. Uh, there's no apparent use for the star. He was machmer. So we have various explanations of what's going on in this bray. So right now we're in the middle of Abaya's explanation. Abaya says the case over here is not that we know it was paid off. The case is that the lova is claiming it was paid off. So according to the Tanakamba, we completely trust the lova since he's the one certifying the star, and he, the same person who certifies the star, is saying that he paid it off. It becomes a pesha us or pesha hitter, and therefore the star. We believe that the star was paid, and it's a worthless star, and that's why the Tanakam is lenient, and that is the machlo. Is whether or not we completely trust the Lova or not. That's the Machlokas, the Tanakam and Rabbi Yehuda. So Abai is in the middle of explaining that. Achayomer Lova Parati Velo Parati. When the Brisa says that we're talking about a paid off star, it's not that we have a paid off star, it's that the Lova is claiming that it was a paid off star. And the issue is do we believe him? Rashi explains, Kilomar Ad Shalomar Parati Chayev Mishomar Parati Potter. When he says Parati is Potter, not that we know is paid, but when he makes the claim of Parati is Potter, why? The Bottle, because the star is totally Bottle, it's a useless star. That's Abaya's explanation of the Bryce, and now the Gemara continues with Rava's explanation. Rava Amar Rava says, Could be everybody agrees that when the Lova says that the star uh, was a good star, but also that he paid it off, the guy needs to certify the star, the star cannot be used. We believe the Lova that he paid it off. Here, here it's a completely different issue. The issue is whether or not we write a receipt. Tanakama Savar Kosvin Shover. The Tanakama says we do write a receipt. So since the uh, Lova, when he pays off the star, he gets a receipt, it's really irrelevant to the Lova whether he gets back the, the star or not. The star becomes essentially useless to the Lova. Rab Yehuda Savar in Kosvin Shover. Rab Yehuda says no, we do not write a receipt, and, the, and therefore the Lova really needs the star back in order to prove that he's paid it off. Rashi explains what the two positions are. Vahachi Garcin and Rashi says Tanakama Savar Kosvim Shovar Vahachi Kamar. This is what it means. Mishaparu Lova when the Lova pays off the the loan Vahotzio Malva B'Shabbos and then the Malva the Malva is the one carrying the uh, the document on Shabbos. Potter he's Potter Sheino Tzarchle because there's no need for it. Vi Amrit came in the Roy Lotzar Alpitz Luchisa who the Boy Aduri Lelova. Now if you're going to say that well the really the Malva should return the star to the Lova because the Lova could use it for whatever he wants. The Lova paid off the the loan. He's entitled to use it to cover his. Uh, to cover his flask. So no, lo mashi le shamiyavuli de malva viachsar viatveno. That's not true because the lova is not going to keep this thing around. He'll destroy it the second he gets it because he doesn't want the malva to get it back and then try to reclaim. Vinami lo mahadir le malva. And if the malva doesn't return it to the lova, lo echbas le lova. The lova doesn't care. The malva costs of le lova shover ilovi because the fact is the lova has a shover anyway, so he's got a receipt to prove it. So that's why, according to the Tanakama, when the malva is carrying it, he's carrying something useless. It's potter. There is no receipt. The Malva now really does need to return to the Lova. And if the Malva doesn't give it back, the Lova is going to say, no, I really do want the, the star back because the sh- a Shover I don't want. A Shover is something that I have to protect all the time. i got to make sure I keep it. But if I get the original loan document back, I can destroy it. I can do whatever I want. Therefore, the Malva really needs to return it. He needs to hold on to it to give it back. It has some use since it has use. According to Rabbi Yehuda, uh, you are chayiv, the Malv is chayiv when he carries it. So that's Rava's answer to the question. And finally, we're going to have Ravashi's answer. Ravashi, Amar Ravashi says, sheni. He wants to show this document to a second Balchov. He wants to just show that he's somebody who pays off loans. Rashi explains, Ravashi, Amar Pluksayo, Kisho Tzio Lova. No, the Machlokas between the Tanakam and Rabbi Yehuda is specifically when the Lova is the one carrying it. Uh, it's not that the Lova needs it to put it on on a flask, use it as a, as a lid. Certainly the, the Lova is not going to leave it around for such a small use. He doesn't want the Malva to get his hands on it and claim again to try to collect a second time. The Lova has a very simple reason to want this document. The Lova wants it to show that he's somebody who pays off loans, and then he can get a second loan from somebody else, so it does have a use, and that's why that's why you might be chayiv 
according to according to Ravashi within the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Again, Ravashi Amram Nei Shatzarach Larosel Labal Chovsheni Damar Lechazi Gaver the Parna. He wants to show he's somebody who pays off loans. The Gemara continues with the two dots. Or Kadei Lasos Vechulu. It said that if you have a hide, if you have leather, how much is the amount you have to take out? It's in order to make an amulet. Boy Minei Rav Amir Rav Nachman Rav Asher Rav Nachman. The following question: Hamotzi Or Bekama? How much is carrying or? Amar Lekid. It's not like the Mishnah said. Or Kadei Lasos Kamiya. The amount to make an amulet. That's the same thing the Mishnah said. Rashi says he asked this question really as a lead up to the following questions. Of course, he knew the Mishnah. How much if you tan the uh, the leather? He said that's the same shear. A person carries carries it in order to be tanned. He said that's also the same shear. How do you know that the shiurim are identical for all the different stages? As we learned in the Mishnah, a person is whitening, combing, dyeing, or spinning the wool. The shear is the amount of the span of the thumb to the index finger, double that amount. And also somebody who's weaving two threads, the same shear. You see that the shear, since it's something that you're intending on spinning it, the shear is the same thing. Here also. Since you intend on tanning this leather, but it has the same exact shear as leather that's already been tanned. So then he asked him, What if you have a, a piece of leather that you're not planning on tanning? How much is the amount that you have to carry? Also, there's no difference. It's the same exact shear. So he said to him, Is there really no difference between if you're tanning it, if you're not planning on tanning it? He asked him the following question. Let's say somebody is carrying out, this is a, a liquid that you're going to use for dye, so it's the amount that you're going to dye a sample. Uh, Rashi explains that le'ira means, it's uh, le'ira was the, a, a piece of wool that you would dye, it would be essentially attached to the area of the weft when you're weaving. So that little tiny amount, that's the amount you have to carry. But if it wasn't, uh, if it was salmonim that weren't yet soaked in order to make them into a dye, Tanans over there we learned in the Mishnah, Klipe Agozum, Klipe Rimonim, Stis Upua, Kedei Lutzvoa, Behen Beged Katan, Lafis Avcha. So there's Stis Upua, those are different materials used for a dye, and how much are you carrying? And that those are not shirui and they're not soaked yet. The amount is a small, it's a small beged that you're going to have. It's part of a headdress that, uh, that a woman wears. So it's, that's a totally different shear. Rashi says it's a larger shear. So the Gemara says, no, it's my Allah, because we, we learned on that. Amar of Nachman, Amar Rabba Baravua, Lefishain Adam Torech, Lishro Samonim, Litzvoa Bahen, Dugmul Ira. Because a person's not going to take Samonim that haven't been soaked, and he's not going to go and soak such a small amount just for a Dugmul Ira, just for a sample size. So if you have, uh, if you have, that's, if you have Samonim that are not soaked, it has to be a little bit of a larger shear. So the Gemara asks from another example, Vare Zerune Gina, what about seeds? The Mekami de Zarinu Tanan, because if you haven't yet planted them, what does it say? Zerune Gina, Pachas Micha Grogris. The amount you have to carry is less than a Grogris. Rabbi Yehuda ben Besei Romer Chamish, it's five seeds. The Ilu Bazar de Zarinu, but after uh, uh, something has been planted, after a seed has been planted, Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, Zevel Vechol Hadak, if you have manure, if you have uh, fine sand, Kedel Lezavel Bo, Klach Shel Kruv, Divri Rabbi Kiva, it's one, essentially one seed, one stalk of cattle. Cabbage is enough. One, one piece of leek. But anyway, the point is that comes from one seed. So you see that after it's planted, the shear is smaller. After it's already been planted, it's just essentially one seed. Uh, whereas before it was planted, it's let's say five seeds. So the Gemara says again, there we already said, Amar Papa, the Rapapa says, There is a big difference between planted and not planted. People don't carry around one seed to plant. When you're carrying seeds to be planted, you're going to carry a, a number of them. When you already have a plant, that's already more chashiv, so even one can be chashiv. Similar question, the Gemara asks, what about mud? Because before you need the mud, what does it say in the Brais? What's the amount of this wastewater? It's a revius. We say, what are you using it for? You're going to use it to knead the mud. But after you already have mud that has already been kneaded, what does it say in the Brais? Picor. Again, we said that you're using this mud for the for the mouth of the bellows. And again, that was the item that was used to increase the heat, to to have a blast of air to increase heat when you're when you're making metal. So the Gemara says, Hasam nami kedam. And there also, we already said this earlier. Adam torech legabel es hatit lasos bo picor. A person's not going to need mud just for that tiny amount. If you already have that mud that's already been kneaded, so then you're going to use it for something small. It's chashev, but if it, if not, then it's going to have to be a larger amount. 
Gemara says another proof, Tashman, and this proof is directly related to Or. All of the other uh, attempts until this point have been regarding other malachas who are trying to say, oh, the shear is different. So then we say, well, it's different. People aren't going to bother with such small shiurim when they're starting from scratch. But here we're going to bring an actual raya from a statement about Oros. The Amar Rebichia Bar Ami Mishmei De Ula, that Rebichia Bar Ami says in the name of Ula, Shlosha Oros Hain, there are three different kinds of hides. Matzah uh, Vechipa Vidiftera. They're called Matzah Chipa and Diftera. Matzah Kimashmo. Matzah is exactly what it sounds like. Delo Muliach, Delo Kamiach, Delo Ofitz. You haven't salted it. You haven't handed it all. You haven't added any flour. You haven't uh, put any gallnut juice. It's basically been completely not processed. The Kamashiro, how much is the shear when you're carrying such an item? Tani Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda, Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda taught, Kadei Lotzer Bo Mishkolas Katana. They would use it to, to wrap a small weight. Vechama, how much was this weight? Amr Abaya Abaya says, Riva de Riva de Pumbadisa. It was a quarter of a quarter of Pumbadisa. Uh, Rashi says it was actually a quarter of a litra of Pumbadisa. That's what it means. So that's the shear of completely unprocessed leather. Chipa what's chipa? The meliach velo kamiach velo afetz. It's got one step of the process done. It was salted, but it wasn't. Had no flour. It had no gall nut juice added. The kamashira. How much is the shear for that? It's not like it says or kadei lasos kamia. That refers to the hide that's already been tanned. That's in order to make an amulet. That's like our mishnah. And difter what's difter? The meliach who kamiach velo afetz. The only thing it's missing is the the processing of the gall nut juice on it. The kamashira. How much is the shear for that? Kadei lichdo velo saget. That would be material they would write a get. So it's the amount that you can write a get on. So katani mihas. What does it say? Uh, nonetheless, what does it say in this whole statement? It says kedei lotzer bo mishkolas katana. It says it's that the shear uh, when it's completely unprocessed is in order to put a, around a small weight. The amra bay river to river to pumbadisa, and Rava gives the shear of a river to river to pumbadisa, and apparently that's a, a less of a shear. Then the shear of, uh, or the, rather the other way, the kamiya, when it is already tanned, the shear is smaller. Rashi says kamiya, but sir shear michte lots of mishkolas. That's a smaller shear than the shear to wrap around the weight, and apparently processing the item does change the shear. So that's uh, completely in, in contrast to what we said before. So the Gemara answers, hasam bibishula. Over there you're talking about, Rashi explains this, bishula doesn't really mean cooked, it means it's moist. It was just taken off the high, the animal, and it's moist, and Rashi explains over here, the bishula lach, kemosh shehofshet kari bishula, lashon bishul shul lach, the hakati lo chazi li'ibud. It's not even set up at all to be to, to be able to be tanned. Avol yavish, when it's dry, chazi li'ibud, at least that can potentially be tanned. The kevin the chazi li'ibud, have it kemubud. Once it's chazi li'ibud, the shear is the same as if it were already tanned. So that's the difference. So it is true. There is a certain kind of hide that has a different shear, but that is specifically referring to a hide that doesn't even have, at this point, the potential to be tanned because it's too moist. So the Gemara says, but didn't we learn in the Mishnah? Habeged shlosha al shlosha lemedris hasak dalit al dalit haor he al pei maputz vav al vav bein lemedris bein lemes. This is talking about tuma. Rashi over here explains shlosha al shlosha latumas medris. Medris is when you put weight upon it, when you sit upon the item. Avol lemaga shalosh al shalosh vein it's both. Okay, so it's for the the shear for a beged is three by three tefachim. If it would be for maga, it would be three by three it's both, which is a smaller shear. And the point over here is that by or, what does it say? What's the shear in tuma? It's he al he. It's it's five by five tvachim. Vitani alon. What does it say on this brisa? It say, what does it say on this mission? It says uh, on this uh, mission is taught a brisa. Habeged vasak vaur kashir latoma kashir lehotza. It says the same shear of five by five tvachim is the shear for hotza as Shabbos. Rashi here says kashir lehotza as Shabbos alma sheein meubud chamisha tvachim bo'inon. You see that when it's five, when it's uh, not uh, tanned hide, it's five tvachim. And we'll say the Mishnah is talking about when it is Mu'ubad. So we can we, we see that they are different shirim. Again, it's the same question. Here we see that when you have or that is not Mu'ubad, it's one shir. And when you have or that is Mu'ubad, it's a different shir. So the Gemara answers, again, a similar answer. Ahu be Kortubla. Rashi explains what's Kortubla. Kortubla is mevashlo beroschin. This is a particular kind of hide that was boiled in, in hot water. Meskash, it's hardened. Leishev olav ulechasot lufkos shakorin push... Uh, Push the toivel mitos vela sosa shulchan. So you're using these uh, to to cover up um, things that you're going to sit on uh, beds, make it into a table. So that's a completely different kind of ore, and therefore it has a different shear. But again, a standard ore, even if it was not tanned, it would have the same ore that was tanned. That is the end of daf ayin tes amid aleph, and we'll see the next video daf ayin tes amid base.